Ron Zong is a senior scientist at NOAA GFDL, and in particular, the division head of the Ocean and Cryosphere Division. This morning, I did a quick uh, search of her name on the US Cliver website to write her introduction, and this is why I have to read off my notes. So I discovered that not only is she part of the US AMOC science team, she was also part of the US AMOC executive committee from 2010 to 2017. She chaired the AMOC state variability and change task team from 2010 to 20, uh, 2014, chaired the AMOC impacts task team from 2015 to 2017, and is part of the AMOC mechanisms and predictability task team and the paleo AMOC task team. So to cut it all off, she helped organize the 2017 US AMOC science team meeting, the 2016 international paleo AMOC workshop, the 2015 rapid US AMOC international science meeting, and the 2012 US AMOC annual meeting. Her latest book is serving as lead author on one of two review papers in the special collection appearing in the Review of Geophysics entitled, A Review of the Role of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation Atlantic Multidecadal Variability and Associated Climate Impacts. So with that, we have the pleasure of having Rong kick us off with a special webinar series. Please go ahead. Thanks, Jenny. Um, I would like to thank US AMOC and UK Rapid Program for organizing this um, AMOC webinar series. And thanks everyone for joining this webinar today. It's um, very nice to speak with you during this challenging time. Our review paper was published last spring. Here I would like to acknowledge my co-authors, Rowan Sutton, Gokan Danabasglu, Yang Okwang, Bob Marsh, Steve Yeager, Dan Ham Amroin, and Chris Lito for their valuable contributions and continuous support throughout the entire process. Our review paper synthesized observed key elements of AMV and many observational and modeling evidence for the AMOC AMV linkage. We also discussed hypotheses for AMV mechanism without an essential role for AMOC and the relationship with observed key elements of AMV. In section four, we reviewed climate impact of muscular AMOC variability and AMV on many regional and hemispheric scales phenomena. And in section five, we synthesized paleo evidence for AMV, muscular AMOC variability and associated climate linkages and we compare those paleo linkages with the modern impacts. So this review paper included nearly 500 references. Um, here, since I don't have time to cover all the contents in this webinar, I will highlight some key conclusions we found from this review paper. To understand the role of AMOC in AMV, it's very important to have a holistic picture of key observed elements of AMV as we summarized in our review paper in section two. The SSC anomaly associated with the observed AMV exhibit a dipole pattern over the entire Atlantic. The observed AMV SSC signal propagates from extratropical North Atlantic into tropical North Atlantic along a horseshoe pathway. The observed AMV is correlated with ocean-driven surface turbulence heat flux with more heat released from mid-latitude North Atlantic into atmosphere during a positive AMV phase. There's high coherence among observed AMV-related support North Atlantic sea surface temperature, salinity, upper ocean heat, and salt content the observed upper and deep subpolar North Atlantic temperature associated with AMV are un anti-correlated. And the observed tropical North Atlantic surface and subsurface temperature associated with AMV are also anti-correlated. Other correlations of observed monthly mean subpolar North Atlantic sea surface temperature and salinity anomalies deviate from an exponential decay expected from a right noise process and exhibit decadal persistence. These observed key elements of AMV represent a crucial benchmark for understanding mechanisms of AMV and the AMOC AMV linkage. Several hypotheses 
have been proposed for AMV mechanisms without an essential role for AMOC. For example, anthropogenic aerosols are implicated as a prime driver of the observed AMV because the observed basin average North Atlantic SST is reproduced in externally forced historical simulations if aerosol indirect effect are included. However, the aerosol mechanism is inconsistent with many observed key elements of AMV. For example, the simulated SST response to anthropogenic aerosols appears in many ocean basin and does not explain well the observed SST dipole pattern in the Atlantic. And this aerosol mechanism also cannot explain the observed anti-correlation between multi-kilo tropical North Atlantic surface and subsurface temperature. The simulated detrended subpolar North Atlantic sea surface salinity um, in the historical run with aerosol indirect effect are quite different from that observed. They even have negative correlation with each other. In another hypothesis, AMV has been proposed to be a right noise response of North Atlantic SSTs to stochastic atmospheric induced surface heat flux forcing without a role for ocean dynamics because North Atlantic SSD patterns associated with AMV and the spectral of basin average North Atlantic SST are similar in fully coupled models with ocean dynamics and in the model coupled to a slab ocean, the so-called slab ocean models without ocean dynamics. In contrast to slab ocean models where a positive AMV is forced by the positive net downward surface heat flux anomalies, in fully coupled model, multi kilo net downward surface heat flux anomalies have a negative correlation and regression with AMV over the polar North Atlantic due to anomalous ocean heat transport convergence consistent with observations. The right noise mechanism as found in slab ocean models cannot explain many observed key elements of AMV and implies no decadal predictability other than short persistence. Here, the lower panels shows the spatial pattern of the most predictable component of North Atlantic SST. The, this most predictable component persists much longer in fully coupled models um, with much higher predictability than that in the slab ocean models due to the important role of ocean dynamics. In section three, we reviewed uh, many observational and modeling evidence for AMOC AMV linkage, such as the linkage indicated by the observed AMOC fingerprint. multi kilo AMOC variability is associated with anomalous horizontal gel circulations and subsurface temperature with opposite sign in subpolar air and Gulf Stream region. Hence, the leading mode of detrended subsurface temperature anomalies in extratropical North Atlantic has been proposed as an AMOC fingerprint. The historical multi-kilo AMOC variations reconstructed from this observed AMOC fingerprint are closely linked to the observed AMV index. Recent observed cooling trend in subpolar North Atlantic upper ocean heat content since 2005 is found to be closely linked to the AMOC decline observed from the RAPID program. And this um, observed cooling trend is also accompanied by a warming trend over the Gulf Stream region, consistent with the dipole pattern from the AMOC fingerprint. And here the reversal of the sun corresponds to a weakening of AMOC over this period. The observed decadal AMOC decline, which is associated with a reduced southward NADW deep flow, is consistent not only with, inf with that inferred from the observed AMOC fingerprint, but also consistent with the observed decline in the AMV index over this period. Observation and modeling studies suggest that coupled air feedback, such as wind evaporation SSD feedback and cloud feedback, are essential for the propagation of the AMOC induced AMV SSD signal from subpolar to tropical North Atlantic along uh, the horseshoe pathway. 
Many current climate models, like both the critical trade wind speed response to mid latitude AMV signal and the positive low cloud feedback over tropical Atlantic, contributing to the much weaker than observed teleconnections between subpolar and tropical AMV SST signal. Both observation, observational and modeling studies have shown that a positive AMV associated with a stronger uh, overturning circulation can induce a negative winter North Atlantic oscillation response in the atmosphere and vice versa, as indicated here in this schematic diagram. The, AM, uh, the NAO response could provide further feedback to much keto AMOC variability. In section three, we discuss that the AMOC AMV linkage is consistent with all observed key elements of AMV we summarized in section two. For example, the much keto AMOC variability can induce coherent multivariate variations in subpolar North Atlantic sea surface temperature, salinity, upper ocean heat and salt content, and net downward surface heat flux. The correlation between AMOC and AMV-related subpolar signals is much stronger in climate models with a relatively stronger multi-kido AMOC variability, and is much weaker in climate models with relatively weaker multi-kido AMOC variability. Most climate models underestimate the amplitude of multi-kido AMOC variability, leading to the estimation of the correlation between AMOC and AMV. Many decadal prediction experiments initialized with observed ocean state exhibit a positive AMOC anomaly at northern high latitude in the mid-90s. Hence, a simulated increase in ocean heat transport into subpolar North Atlantic and successfully predicted observed decadal warming shift in subpolar North Atlantic. In contrast, uninitialized handcast with prescribed changes in external forcing do not simulate the positive AMOC anomaly at northern high latitude, and thus cannot predict the observed decadal um, observed AMV positive AMV shift suggesting the critical role of AMOC in AMV and associated Atlantic decadal predictions. As we summarized in section three, the AMOC AMV linkage is consistent with all observed key elements of AMV and underlines the enhanced decadal prediction skills of AMV. Much decadal variability in AMOC and associated Atlantic heat transport are key contributors to support North Atlantic SSC and upper ocean heat content anomalies associated with the AMV and should not be neglected. Coupled RC feedbacks in response to changes in support North Atlantic are important for the propagation of AMV SST signal from support to tropical North Atlantic along the hot shoe pathway. The hypothesis that changes in external radiative forcing or stochastic atmospheric forcing is a, a prime driver of AMV, disagrees with many observed key elements of AMV. It's critical to use multivariate metrics to understand the key drivers of the observed AMV. In section four, we synthesized many climate impact of multi AMOC variability and AMV. For example, Many statistical analyses of observations suggest that AMV is correlated with smart keto fluctuations of ITCZ position and Sahara and Indian summer monsoon rainfall. The causal linkage between AMV and ITCZ shift is associated with change in AMOC induced Atlantic heat transport and compensated atmosphere heat transport across the equator consistent with coupled climate model simulations of the ocean atmosphere heat transport compensation and ITCZ shift induced by an abrupt AMOC change. Recent atmosphere general circulation model experiments suggest that AMV can induce a winter NAO response with an amplitude comparable to that observed a realistic winter NAO response to AMV exists in a high-top AGCM with well-resolved stratosphere 
but not in a low-top AGCM that has poorly resolved stratosphere and inhibited upward propagation of planetary waves. Meanwhile, the amplitude of winter NAO signal associated with EMV in coupled climate models is much weaker than observed due to the underestimated internal AMV signal and associated surface turbulence heat flux anomalies. This is consistent with the underestimation of internal multicado winter NL in many climate models. The positive AMV can also lead to warmer and wetter summers over Western Europe and warmer and drier summer climate over Central North America in both observations and HECM experiments. The impact of AMV on European summer surface temperature is underestimated in many coupled climate models, especially in those having weak correlations between AMV and multicado surface turbulence heat flux anomalies over the mid-latitude North Atlantic. Modeling studies also suggest that AMOG and associated Atlantic heat transport is a key player for multicado Arctic CS variability. For example, the simulated winter Arctic CS decline associated with an intensified AMOG and a positive AMV resembles the satellite observed winter Arctic CS decline pattern over recent decades. The predicted decadal winter Arctic CS decline since the late 1990s is very similar to that simulated in ocean general circulation model handcuffs due to a strengthening in the AMOG and associated Atlantic heat transport. As we summarized in section four, there is an essential role for, for AMOG in many AM-related climate phenomena. Here, I don't have time to cover the impacts on Atlantic hurricanes, ENSO, Pacific decade variability, climate over Asia, and hemispheric mean surface temperature, but there are lots of discussion on those topics in our review paper. AMOC induced anomalous Atlantic heat transport and surface heat flux released into the atmosphere over mid and high latitude North Atlantic are crucial for many AMV related climate impacts. Initializing AMOC anomaly at northern high latitude is critical in predicting the observed AMV decadal shifts and associated climate impacts. In section five, we synthesized many paleo evidence for AMV multicado AMOG variability and associated climate linkages. We found that paleo reconstructions largely indicate that AMV is a phenomena that existed prior to the instrumental period with enhanced power at multicado time scales significantly above a right now its background, and it is not dominated by the solar and the volcanic forcing. Paleo proxies indicate that the linkage between AMV and multicado AMOG variability also existed in the pre-industrial period. Whereas climate linkages associated with AMV, such as linkages with ITCZ, Western Africa monsoon, climate over Europe, North America, Asia, and Arctic, Northern Hemisphere mean surface temperature are also imprinted in paleo proxy records. In section six, we listed many challenging issues, which are also great opportunities for future studies. Here, I will highlight some key issues. It's essential to improve the mean state AMOC structure and the amplitude of multicado AMOC variability in climate models for more realistic simulations of linkages between AMOC and AMV and associated climate impacts. Improvement of winter NAO response to AMV and coupled Arctic Atlantic interactions at multicado timescales in climate models might be critical for, improve, for improving the amplitude of multicado AMOC variability. The propagation of subpolar AMV SSC signal into the tropics and associated coupled RSA feedbacks are significantly hampered by mean state SSD bias in tropical Atlantic in many climate models. 
the pattern and amplitude of AMV-related anomalous surface heat flux released into the atmosphere over mid to high latitude North Atlantic are poorly simulated in many climate models and should be targeted for future improvement to simulate more realistic climate impact of AMV. A better understanding of the linkages also requires the expansion of paleo records and sustained long-term instrumental observations in the future. I'll stop here and take questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone who has a question, I realize we have over 150 participants, but um, if you just unmute yourself and ask your question, we can answer those. Otherwise, you can type into the chat box and we'll try to get to them. Uh, this is Clara Desser. I had a question. Thank you for your great presentation. Uh, I know you didn't have time to go over everything, but I just wondered if you could comment on your view of how uh, AMV should be best defined um, in the observational record. What, what indices and how to treat, you know, the trends and all of that kind of thing. <laughs> Hi, uh, Clara. Nice to hear from you. Um, let me go back to the observed um, AMV, key elements of AMV. Yeah. Okay, so many studies have used uh, uh, many different definitions for the AMV index. Um, and one common AMV index is used based on the observed uh, SST, uh, average, based on average SST. Um, and also there's different detrending method. Um, traditionally, people use linear detrending and more recently, uh, more people think that nonlinear detrending with the global mean signal removed has a, a more accurate uh, reflection, especially the recent uh, decline in the AMV. Um, it's not shown in the linear detrending, but uh, with nonlinear detrending as shown here, uh, you can see the recent decline. And also, um, since we talk about uh, so many uh, key elements of AMV, it's a coherent signal, not just in SST. Um, so study has proposed to use multivariate definition, including sea surface subpolar Atlantic sea surface salinity and upper ocean heat and salt content. Hey, I think the police not the minaria. So I think we need. Um, as I mentioned here, we need um, a holistic picture. Um, you know, since we have limited observation, we should make better use of all the observation to have a coherent picture, uh, especially a multivariate matrix to understand um, AMV. And so a better uh, definition of AMV based on that uh, would uh, help us to improve our understanding. Thank you. We have one question on the chat. Uh, Zheng Zhen, who asks, are there any observed changes of AMOC consisting with global warming projection? Um, do you mean the global warming projection of the weakening of AMOC? Um, so the rapid observation, you know, that's uh, only um, the longest continuous observation we got since um, 2004, which shows a decadal decline trend. Um, but many studies suggest that this decline trend is mainly dominated by internal variability. So I don't think currently uh, we have direct observational evidence for the centennial weakening for the AMOC, um, like some climate models simulated. Uh, another question on the chat. Let's see if I can pull it up again. You emphasize multivariate analysis. In terms of sustained observations, should there be priorities such as arrays for basin fluxes, Argo, deep Argo? This is from Stuart Cunningham. Um, yeah, um, I think the um, basin fluxes um, and deep Argo is especially very important, uh, especially for the North Atlantic region. Um, we can infer the AMOC from the uh, hydrographic data. So right now, the Argo only have um, upper uh, 
2,000 meters. So uh, information below 2,000 meter is very important to uh, provide information of the overflow and uh, to initialize ocean model, you know, climate models for decadal predictions. So yeah, I agree that deep algal uh, observations uh, is crucial. Any other questions? Um, hey, this is Dave Katsiva. I would have a question. Uh, I wondered when you say uh, that AMOC variability is a crucial driver of AMV, would you say it's the dominant driver, at least for certain timescales like the Centennial timescale? Um, so this in this review paper, we focus on the March Cato timescale. So on longer time scale, uh, you mean centennial or millennium, I, I think aim of variability is also uh, very important. Okay, thank you. See, I see more chat questions. Um, let me pull it up again. Renellis asks, you mentioned the challenge of tropical Atlantic biases and coupled models inhibiting the realism of AMOC signals reaching the tropics. Can you say a few quick words about that? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, so there's a study like a Martin et al. 2014 paper. They compared semi models um, of this um, AMV signal in tropical North Atlantic and um, they uh, separate the models with uh, uh, better simulation of mean state tropical North Atlantic with the model has a um, less um, performance in tropical North Atlantic mean state simulation. And they found the model with better uh, simulation of mean state has stronger signal, a uh, stronger teleconnection um, between Sapala and the tropical North Atlantic. So the AMV signal in tropical North Atlantic, uh, like, um, and also the response, you know, like a wind shear, ITCD shift are, are all improved in models with a better simulation of the mean state. Thank you, Rong. There is another question on chat. Um, Yakana Kushir, Kushnir asks, um, thank you, Rong, for the presentation. Regarding prediction, the models that predict changes in subpolar gyre variability are initialized only to about 2,000 meters. Doesn't this show that the processes that lead to predictability are relatively shallow? Um, yes, I, I think um, um, the uh, models that um, they initialize um, AMOC, which is mainly in the Labrador Sea, um, so that's upper 2,000 meters, uh, it is a shallow signal, but the, um, they can predict the downstream um, impact of the AMOC and AMV. Um, so, you know, there's currently debate where the deep water formation uh, should be, whether in Labrador Sea or Nordic Sea. Um, so I think it's, that's the active, uh, um, important area for research. Um, but I think we, we do need uh, uh, data below 2,000 meters to initialize the AMOC signal in the eastern part of the ocean basin, um, such as south of the Denmark Strait, where you got uh, descending and entrainment um, below 2,000 meters. Another question online. Uh, Jennifer Francis says, recent studies have suggested that the cold pool south of Greenland is at least in couple, in part caused by extra fresh water from increasing melt of the Greenland ice sheet, as well as increased river input to the Arctic Ocean, which is transported into the North Atlantic. Does this warming related factor have the potential dis to disrupt historical AMOC slash AMV linkages? Yeah, sure. Uh, if we talk about historical AMOC, uh, AMV linkage, you know, a similar event is a great slinky anomaly in the um, late 60s, early 70s. Um, there's actual fresh water uh, entering to the North Atlantic from Arctic. And that's uh, their evidence indicates uh, that's uh, caused, uh, you know, um, contribute to the weakening of AMOC during that period and the negative phase of AMV. 
Okay, uh, let's see, let's see if we skipped a question from Lynn. Uh, he asks, how about the AMV evaluation from paleo climate data? Um, not quite sure what the question is in reference to, but if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, unless wrong, you know what he's hinting at or she. Um, sorry, um, could you repeat the question? Um, uh, is how about the AMV evaluation from paleo climate data? Oh, um, okay, let me go back to that slide. Um, so here is an example of the, um, actually this two paper is, uh, shows two different, uh, the black line here, uh, two different AMV reconstructions. And um, there's also many um, reconstructions from both terrestrial uh, tree ring uh, ice core record and also marine record from tropical North Atlantic from such as coral growth and isotope records. And those records um, in general, they have um, correlated coherent and they all shows um, you know, a uh, significant Matikido time um, at Matikido band above the right noise uh, background. Uh, John Nielsen Gammon asks, how well constrained is the typical AMV amplitude given the long time scales and short historical record? Um, yeah, so that's why we look into the paleo uh, evidence, you know, so because the uh, the modern observation is um, much shorter, um, but the paleo uh, record in general indicates the amplitude of AMV um, is similar uh, during the pre-industrial period. Um, um, there's no substantial change in the amplitude of AMV according to the paleo records. Uh, Atusa Saberi asks, thank you for your great presentation. And the correlation maps you showed, could you comment on how robust that is just southwest of Iceland, um, e.g. p-values? Um, which correlation? The... Let's see. The correlation map. You mean the correlation with the um, Sapala signal? Is this one? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, how robust just southwest of Iceland? <laughs> um, yeah, it's southwest of Iceland. I think it's also model dependent, you know. So, in general, as I mentioned, the model with stronger AMOC variability. Um, there are stronger uh, correlations with the signal um, in the temperature and salinity, but not much in the heat flux. While in models with weaker AMOC variability, you have less robust correlations. Any other questions? I don't see any new questions popping up on the chat. Anyone have any questions um, they want to ask out loud? All right, so I think we will conclude today's webinar. It's um, 10 minutes over our time, so we'll be respectful of your time. Um, so thank you, Ron, for presenting. The next AMOC webinar will be on June 18th, as Mike mentioned, this is held once a month. Um, I'm gonna butcher your last name, but I believe Wilbur, is it Wire from Los, Al Los Alamos National Laboratory will give us a summary talk on his paper, Stability of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, a review and synthesis. So we hope to see you there. Thank you everyone for joining. <laughs>